I see that crypto could, could further contribute. The reason why I'm passionate about Wall Street is not because the guys that wear suits, but it's because it actually does, if it's done correctly, mean more jobs, this economy is better, this company is able to grow, you know, whatever. But, but crypto is also able to do that through raising capital, you know, like it's it, there's so many synergies and, and the, the idea is let's keep finance the way it was supposed to be, which is to improve things. Yeah, let's have fun, let's gamble, let's YOLO, you can do that too. But let's make sure at the end of the day, it actually has a meaningful impact on people. Hey everybody, today I'm joined with the founder of Wall Street Bets, Jamie Rogozinski. Uh, Jamie, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we kind of got connected. We'll start with this. We, we kind of got connected over some crazy stuff that's been going on. And we were talking before we went on air, and I think it really lines with, with crypto. So we had talked about Safe Moon, and we uncovered an exploitable bug in their code. Uh, and, you know, we got a lot of pushback, of course, from the Safe Moon community. But there was an issue that rose up because part of the people that we were working with that uncovered that was from Satoshi Street Bets. And of course, you know, that was a spun off of Wall Street Bets. And, and there's a Twitter account called Satoshi Street Bets. And they were saying, oh, no, we didn't work with BitBoy. We have nothing to do with this, blah, 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 blah. And it's all a bunch of, you know, misinformation because we did. Could you kind of explain the structure of Wall Street Bets and explain the, how Satoshi Street Bets kind of, you know, spun out uh, underneath them and who really own, owns or is in charge of Satoshi Street Bets? Yeah. So I mean, first time I'm just going to point out that if you, if you're not getting any haters, you're not doing it right. <laughs> so, and I'm not, I'm not a stranger to that world. Uh, uh, so yeah, no, look, it's kind of this weird that there's no real structure to it, right? People are just used to having companies with like a CEO and then this is how it works, but Satoshi street bets, wall street bets, silver street bets, you know, there's a new one that came up the other day, K street bets for Korea, which I thought was kind of cool. <laughs> it's it's this omnipresent idea, right? That it means like, dude, I'm going to empower myself. I'm going to take control. I'm going to learn. I'm going to take risks. I'm going to YOLO, whatever it is. And it lives on Reddit, Telegram, Discord, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Like it's it's just, it's this kind of a, a, a if, you, if you could consider it like anonymous, right? There is no people that can say, I am the anonymous, right? Like that, by definition, you can't be. So it's just kind of everywhere. And everyone, sometimes there's these clusters that kind of fight with each other because this cluster over here wants right. to think something and the one over there, but that's the beauty of it, right? Like that's what makes it good because they, they argue, they discuss, and all of a sudden you have better perspectives on both sides. And now people are better informed and better off as a consequence. Yeah, I think it's great because, uh, you know, it really embodies decentralization, you know, not controlling, not saying like, no, you're definitely not Wall Street bets. You're not this, you're not that. Uh, I think that's really good. And that's, you know, all the ideals that, you know, we align with in crypto. Uh, I think that goes, you know, kind of against censorship and and things like that. All, all ideas that we really hate uh, here on this side of, of the blockchain. Um, so I want to talk about, um, you know, kind of along those, those same lines, uh, talking about decentralization. Uh, I know you've actually got uh, a product, like a DeFi product. I know you're very passionate about DeFi. And you told me before we went on air that you just got into crypto, like, uh, you know, uh, a few months ago, I think you said maybe four months ago, something like that. So let, we'll lead into the, or we'll, we'll end up at the DeFi stuff, but let's start with what really kind of got you, you know, in, in the vein of thinking of heading towards crypto. I assume you do stocks too, not necessarily away from stocks, but, uh, you know, it, on this side of the world. You know, it was kind of blind luck. Like when I, I've been following crypto forever, right? And I am an economist at heart and I'm also you know, a passionate technologist. And so when Bitcoin came out in 2008, I forget what year it was. I was like, oh, this is a cool thing, right? Like, and I appreciated the technology and I appreciated the thought behind this whole idea of having this currency that has a component, a scarcity, you know, like they don't, they're not infinite and, you know, the way that you can exchange it and it lasts forever. So it's all these properties. I'm like, oh, cool. I hope they can make it, right? And I even tried, like, like, I think I probably started a minor thing on my computer and I probably mined several Bitcoins and, you know, <laughs> typical story like that. Not that I, you know, really was into it because it was just like, ah, this is too cumbersome. And then eventually they made it. Bitcoin's a big thing. And, you know, it's starting to be accepted by different places. And I'm like, I think by 2010, the Cypress thing really pushed it up. And it's so like, okay, cool. Congratulations, Bitcoin. You guys did it, right? Like now it's a digital currency. Good, good on you. But it's still just that it becomes an asset that goes up and down. Trading it was just the execution was terrible. The spreads were insane. The type of trading that I'm used to with equities, it was just not going to work on Bitcoin. So I'm like, I'll just look at the price every day. And that's my 
And I, ne- I never went back to reevaluate my stance. And then these other coins start coming out of whatever. And I'm like, yeah, it's the same thing, different name. And I made a huge mistake, right? Like I didn't, my, the mistake was not, my original evaluation was correct. My mistake was not reevaluating that stance a few years later when there were new terms that I didn't take the time to research, such as DeFi, right? Such as uh, just a, a ton of these other things because crypto is so much more than just the price of it. Absolutely. <laughs> even, when I, even when I tell my friends like, yeah, yeah I'm getting into DeFi. I'm like, oh, oh, so you're bullish Bitcoin? I'm like, well, maybe, sure, whatever. Kind of. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I don't really care. I'm not, you know. But it is so powerful. And my passion is with Wall Street, right? Like it's just stocks and the whole equities thing. And I can see how the 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 blockchain, the crypto, the DeFi world has improved upon and, and really adopted and made things so much better. Like I found out the other day, I'm on on Binance and I'm clicking around and I usually learn things by clicking clicking buy and sell. Yeah. And I saw these leveraged DTFs and I'm like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Let me see what that does, right? Buy, boom. No, you can't do it uh, because you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, dude, I know what a leveraged ETF is. Trust me, there's nothing you can tell me what that means. Like I know the dangers, right? And so you got to watch a video, take a quiz. So I, I watched the video and first of all, I was impressed with how well they explained something that's complicated, like this volatility K concept. Number two, I'll be damned. I actually learned something. It turns out these guys figure out how to do something called variable leverage DTF, and it's really complicated to explain, but it fixes this problem, the side effect that these leverage DTFs have, that they go to zero in the long term. No matter what happens with the price of these coins, they go to zero, right? And they fix that problem, right? In a really creative way. I'm like, damn, why doesn't this exist there, right? 24 hour day trading, you know, I, I was like, all right, maybe there's people at three in the morning want to trade. But what it does for Wall Street, if that was 24 hours a day, you would get rid of things that are called gap risks. You would have like constant rebalancing of things. You know, you have weird things that happen in the market once a month because it's the end of the month. You got to rebalance, whatever. This thing would just force everything to constantly be synchronized and the the market would then be stronger. So now so now I'm like fascinated by this. I'm like, we need yeah. to make Wall Street, which is my passion, look more like crypto, mm-hmm. right? But I also need to bring some of these Wall Street people into crypto because crypto really does have a lot to offer. And I think that crypto can still learn some things from Wall Street. So I'm trying to kind of stay in the middle there and pulling these two things together. Yeah, that's pretty cool because I, I usually don't want to learn anything from Wall Street. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're biased against uh, against those guys a, a lot of times. I mean, it's just uh, the stocks to, to me, I mean, it just embodies everything about traditional finance. And we're trying to do something disruptive and something different. And I know there's, you know, I really liked what was going on with, you know, uh, attacking the hedge funds and, you know, calling out Robin Hood. I, a lot of that stuff that was going on with Wall Street bets. I love that. That was the first time I was ever interested in stocks because I was like, man, this is, this is, you know, I wanted to just somehow like port myself into the mind of those people and be like, Take your take your blinders off. This is what we're doing in crypto. We're doing all the same stuff. So I think there's a lot of synergy uh, to work together. What so, so you know you love Wall Street or you know love Wall Street. I mean you obviously you see all the problems, but uh, when it came to Wall Street bets and trying to to get together like a lot of these opportunities to you know short the hedge or to you know the short squeezes and picking these stocks that seem like to be there from dead companies. How much of that was like kind of just good investment advice at the time and how much of it was just wanting to kind of attack the authorities in there. It's not even either, or it's kind of attack the system, right? Like, cause it's right. even it's certain when, when I hear people, yeah, you want to kill that hedge fund. Like, you know, remember hedge funds, they, they handle the pensions for firefighters mm-hmm. and teachers. Like, you, 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 I mean, this is a circular thing. You're really hurting. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're not bad people. into themselves. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. sure. Put, put whatever label you want onto them, but, 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 but it's not black and white. Right. And so the idea behind this was, when I, when I started Wall Street Bets, I literally had actually written this long dissertation about leverage DTFs because of this volatility component. And I was so mad that these things were available. I'm like, this is going to break. Like, how can people benefit from having such yeah. a crazy thing? And then I said, no, 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 screw it. Like, let's let's make Wall Street Bets instead. Like, they, they gave me a casino. Let's give them a casino, right? And let's just push it. And let's have conversations on TV about how ridiculous these things are. Yeah. And I'm not going to get there through a blog post. Right. And, you know, and so throughout the years, it's always been, let's find exploits because GameStop is the latest in a series of many things that have happened throughout the years, many of which were have high, high profile, but more niche and, and definitely not nearly as much as GameStop. But you'd have people that figured out like you have you get leverage and this you'll appreciate because in, in, in blockchain, everything is contract, smart contract type mm-hmm. collateralized. There's no way you can make the counterparty go bust. Right. Because it's just, you know, it's it's 
programmatically done. But in the real Wall Street, as we saw in 2008, you have these things called counterparty risk, which means you know you make a trade with somebody else and that other person owes you stuff depending on what happens. And if that person can't pay you, right? Then a lot of dominoes kind of fall. Yeah, in crypto falls. that doesn't happen, right? So, uh, so, so when we start, so these guys figured out this thing with margin on their broker and they're like, oh, they, they didn't lock it properly when they lend me money. So we're going to do this thing and we're going to click so many buttons and then we're going to have a million dollars worth of buying my power in my account. And they actually, they actually did that. Multiple people did that. And they're like, this is how you do it, guys, by the way. So you had people that put 3000 bucks in their broker. They would click a bunch of buttons. They will have a million dollars worth of buying power, right? They could withdraw it, but they could buy a million dollars worth of shares or whatever. And they would start YOLOing on crazy things, right? And a lot of people lost money from it. And like, dude, I don't have a million bucks. Good luck trying to get it, right? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it's this whole you know, this whole idea of like bail me out, right? Like a lot of 2008 stuff. So it's always been, let's try and find these inefficiencies in the system. But at heart, my actual heart is let's actually fix it. Every time they break something, it gets a little bit better. This thing that happened with GameStop, they had congressional hearings, they did these things, they try to improve them. I see that crypto could, could further contribute. The reason why I'm passionate about Wall Street is not because the guys that wear suits, but it's because it actually does, if it's done correctly, mean more jobs, this economy is better, this company is able to grow, you know, whatever. But but crypto is also able to do that through raising capital, you know, like it's, it, there's so many synergies. And, and the, the idea is let's keep finance the way it was supposed to be, which is to improve things. Yeah, let's have fun. Let's gamble. Let's YOLO. You can do that too. But let's make sure at the end of the day, it actually has a meaningful impact on people. Yeah, I think that's great. And I mean, that's, that's a lot of what we focus, you know, here on the channel is impacting people's individual you know, financial freedoms and, and financial situations is something we love whenever we go and we talk to people and people are like, man, through the education on your channel, like we were able to do X, Y, and Z, or, you know, they're showing me their portfolio. And, and that's the stuff that I really love is we're kind of like, sometimes we're breaking generational chains of people that never thought that they'd be able to own their own business or, you know, retire or, you know, buy a house. Uh, you know, I, I remember talking to a girl who, you know, sh- she bought her first ever house. Uh, she's, you know, in her forties and, you know, she lived in an apartment her entire life. And her family lived in an apartment their entire lives. And she was able to do that uh, through some of the stuff we talked about on the channel. And, and I think impacting people and the, impacting the economy at large, I think those are, are really good things. So let me ask you this, because as you're speaking about, you know, DeFi and, and the problems and, you know, how crypto can solve a lot of it, you know, uh, Ethereum, right? Ethereum bringing on kind of the decentralized web. Uh, you know, a, a land where there's not as much censorship, uh, a land where we can bring in the derivatives market, which I'm, I'm sure you're aware, like some estimates put the derivatives market as two thirds of all money in the world, a quadrillion dollars. Um, that makes me really bullish on Ethereum that we could bring in that market into the world of crypto. Wh- where eventually do you see the line? Do you see the line deteriorating between crypto and traditional uh, markets, including derivatives? Yeah, you, you took the words from my mouth. We're, I, I don't think at any point Ethereum or, or, or crypto is going to actually pull and, and, and replace anything that's on the other side. Like the, a lot of the, the the rhetoric around Bitcoin started is like, screw the central banks, you know, this whole yeah. thing, the fiat, the printing the money, whatever. The mo- central banks aren't going anywhere. So we can get over that idea. Um, but you can coexist, right? You're already having El Salvador, you're obviously having con- countries that are that are saying, all right, cool, we can let's coexist. Other countries like China, they're like, yeah, forget Bitcoin, want to do ours. Uh, but that's fine too, because that's just giving more credence to the blockchain technology. You know, that's a separate conversation what they did, but but they coexist. So I see those two things kind of coming together because they're they both serve a really good purpose. And I think that together combined can really be powerful. And we're already seeing that, right? We're seeing that through tokenized stocks, which is something that I'm working on right now with this project. You can buy or not you, you can, and anybody else around the world can buy uh, what we're calling stocks. It's exposure to Apple, Google, Tesla, whatever. I want to buy Samsung, me personally, but I can't because I don't live in Korea. I don't have a brokerage account and it's a pain in the butt. But through this technology, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm able to get exposure to these things, right? Like, that's super cool. And you're starting to see spill over the other way around, too. There were Bitcoin futures that were trading on the CBUA for a while. You know, you're having symbolic things like these companies, Coinbase, going public and you know, line out the door for a number of ETFs that want to try and track right. Bitcoin. So, so these things are coming together, whether we like it or not, right? And it's great. It's a really good thing that these things are going to happen. Yeah, I, I think it's it's good that we we say I, I kind of envision a world one day where like exchanges will just have stocks and crypto in there. But it, it, let me say that the tokenized 
the tokenized stocks thing to me is very controversial because uh, like I know, uh, you know, the whole idea of it, right, is to create, you know, uh, I'm not sure about the one you're talking about specifically, but if you look at like synthetics or uh, some of the other protocols that do something similar, like what Binance was doing, well, they're creating synthetic versions. So you're investing in the synthetic version, the derivative, you're not actually investing into the stock. Like China won't allow, you know, their citizens to buy American stocks, but, you know, they try to find ways to do it, but it's highly illegal there. So it kind of solves that problem. You were talking about Samsung, here, you know, and, and here being able to do that. But do you not think that regulators are going to try to put a, a stifle on that? Because that's what I feel like we've seen so far. Binance has already had to remove some of those tokenized stocks. That's right. First of all, I agree with you on the co companies going public. Like as soon as I realize how these things work, I'm like, oh boy, like there's no yeah. reason why a company is going public on the net. I think it's a lack of regulation that's actually preventing that. But I agree with you on that one. Uh, on, on the Yeah. Now when it comes to these tokenized stocks, it is, it is tricky, right? It's complicated. I'll tell the user, hey, buy this thing that says Apple, you click it. And then if Apple goes up, you, this thing goes up. And if Apple goes down, this thing goes down. Behind the scenes, how you make that happen is really where it gets kind of tricky. There's a yeah. lot of ways to do that. And so uh, so I'll answer the regulator question too. I hope regulators come in because the moment regulators come in, they really, they don't want to stop people from doing things. They don't want to stop people from having fun. They don't want to, well, sometimes I guess. They don't uh, want yeah, to have definitely to want them to stop from having fun for sure. <laughs> but they, want, they don't want to stop people from, they, they don't want to stop activity, which is potentially productive. They want to protect people that, you know, from scams, they, they want to try and legitimize it and put a framework around it. And I think that, the, I think that the, a little bit of regulation, right, to help identify, because of the nature of this thing, you can't really forcibly make someone do it, but you can say, hey, if you opt into this regulatory scheme where you got audited, whatever, then you have our seal of approval, right? So this thing's not going to be a rug pull, whatever. This thing is a, so I, I think that is, that could actually be a benefit to it. So if regulators come in there and go, okay, okay, let's see where the potential harm is. And now to, to your the middle part of your question, which is how, why are Chinese people buying American stocks or vice versa, right? Like how can this going, depending on how you, you track that asset, sometimes you go in and you buy the stock and, and that actually has an effect on the price of the market. And that's when these regulators need to say, hold on, hold on. In the U.S., you can buy stocks. You got to put your ID. You need to know who you are because we don't want foreign actors trying to mess around with our, our mm. stock system. And they're right. You know, they have to be careful with that. Uh, but to that same extent, I think that the world could benefit. Why shouldn't a kid from Singapore be able to buy Tesla? Why shouldn't yeah. I be able to buy Samsung? Like th there should be. So we've pushed them into this and say, OK, let's come up with a framework around it. Make it fair. Make sure that nobody's going to try and do some kind of hostile government, whatever, then let's push it through. But in the meantime, there's lots of different ways. If you don't actually buy this stock physically, which sometimes you do in order to create this effect, uh, if you do it, this other mechanism where you're just kind of mirroring the prices, then you're not really having an effect on the stock. Then it's a little bit more, then the governments don't have to be as defensive about it. Yeah. It's like the difference between betting on a racehorse or, you know, pumping the racehorse full of steroids. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's got, got the same idea, really. You know, you're not you're not affecting the rates. You're just kind of you're looking at it. And you're trying to observe where the price is going and make money, money on that. So, yeah, well, I mean, if, if you think about what we saw with GameStop, that was just in the U.S. with actual equities. If mm. people wanted to do that on a global scale, right, things are really unpredictable. So I could see where people would get nervous on that. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's very it's going to be very interesting to see how all this turns out over the next few years. And of course, it's going to go much further than that. But specifically with the tokenized stocks and, and with the entire DeFi world, because we're, we're just opening up to a totally borderless economy in the world uh, digitally. Now, of course, we have physical borders but digitally there's no reason for us to have borders anymore we, we're a total global uh you know economy where anybody can you know transfer money move money around and that's going to get easier and easier over the next few years so well jamie listen it's been great having you on the show today uh glad we straightened that out at the beginning we talked about wall street bets toshi bets talked about DeFi, uh talked about deri uh, derivatives a lot of the stuff that uh you're passionate about uh where can people find you at uh, they can find me on Twitter is at Wall Street Bets, all three words all spe okay. spelled out, or WallStreetBets.net. That's where you can see this this project that we're working on, which is really it's more than just what I described earlier. It's really community coming together and creating this version of a globalized hedge fund as well. So uh, check that stuff out. You can see me, um, I guess Instagram Jamie Rogozinski, but um, 
but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be many places here in the coming weeks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And, and to my audience, uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you believe that the future is a merged world between stocks and crypto? Really interesting. Get your takes on that. That's all I got. Be blessed. Well, yeah.